Getting better is going to not just take a little bit of effort. Getting better is not just going to take a few extra hours a week. Getting better is going to take the greatest fucking effort of your life. It's going to take a lot of time, the commitment that you put into this. The only way to have fun, the only way to truly have fun at some of this is by making progress. All of us have been stuck. How bad does that suck? All of us have been stuck with weight loss or strength gain or gaining muscle. It matters a lot to us. And when you're not progressing, it feels like you're just going backwards and it can be very depressing. So the only way to feel better about it is to kick some ass. And the only way to kick some ass is to have like-minded motherfuckers in your corner. People that have the desire to get better. People that have the same drive. People that are maybe even more determined than you at times. People that are maybe even more hungry than you at times. Earlier today, a lot of guys were having some fun throwing around some weight. Steve Gentile uh, hit a 535 or 525 pound bench press for three reps. There's a couple other good PRs for the day. Silent Mike over here hit a PR. A few other guys were tearing up some big weights. As the old guy, the old guy, I couldn't just sit, sit back and watch them have the fun. TP Hulk, who's a, looks like he's sculpted out of fucking granite, was here. Bodybuilder, power lifter, ass kicker. He did 500 for a few singles, so I thought to myself, you know what? Let me kick this shit up a notch and let me jump in on this. Once I heard him say he was working up to, four, to five plates, I said, whatever he's doing for one, I'm doing for five. And I love the guy. It's nothing against him. It's nothing personal. That was just something to get me fired up. And you guys need to find motivation and inspiration. It's all around you. It surrounds you each and every day. You may not know where it is, but you have to keep your eyes open. And that's a message I want to share with you guys today is that it's not just about the, the numbers. It can't just always be about lifting weights. It can't just always be about the numbers themselves. This stuff has to carry. You guys have to understand that the values and the opportunities that can happen inside of here can make you a champion in your entire life not just on the platform. It's not about lifting 405 or 500. It's about self-improvement. That self-improvement is gonna take you through your everyday life and you'll be known as an ass kicker in your everyday life. And not just as a lifter. This is a journey and this is a process that can be utilized to help you with other things other than just the lifting itself. One thing that you guys may not realize or may not understand is that we all have the same opportunity in here. Inside this gym right here, we all have the same opportunity. There's the same amount of weights in here for everyone. There's the same barbells for everyone. There's the same thing of chalk. There's a similar pairs of wrist wraps and belts and so on lying around the gym. You guys have access to similar coaches. You have access to similar training methods. So why in the world are you gonna let somebody else kick your ass? What makes somebody else so special? If not you, then who? And if not now, then when? You gotta think about that. Why, why not you? Why can't you get better? Why can't you be the strongest guy in here? Why can't you out deadlift, out squat, out bench everybody in here? Maybe if you started to think about outworking everyone, that that would be a good place to start. And on top of that, that would be infectious and that would bleed into everybody else that's in here, everybody else that's inside this gym, and it would create a better environment to train in, period. Which again, <laughs> it's gonna come right back to you and make you a better lifter. I think a lot of times we get caught up 
in the day to day of what we're doing and our heads are down and we're not paying attention to how many great opportunities there are. There's tons of opportunities for you to get better. There's tons of opportunities for you to find inspiration in your life. And there's tons of opportunities for you guys to constantly improve and work towards getting better. Everyone in this room possesses the ability to get stronger. Everyone in this room possesses the ability to get better. But if you keep trying the same thing over and over again with no improvement, then it's time to change some shit up. If you read the same book all your life, if you had all the same friends all your life, if you lived in the same area your entire life, that's all the shit you're ever gonna know. You're not gonna have any other experience with any other things to know anything else that's going on. So you have to be willing to try some new and different things from time to time. You have to be willing to have a white belt mentality. You're not an expert. You're gonna need help. I'm that way. I watched those guys lift today and I got a ton of inspiration and motivation from what they were doing. I also learned a lot by watching the way that they were lifting, watching their attitude, watching their mindset, watching where they put their feet, where they put their hands on the bench. And just even looking into their eyes, you can see what's gonna happen before it ever even happens. Somebody goes for a heavy deadlift or somebody goes for a heavy squat. You can sometimes see that somebody's halfway defeated before they even try to lift sometimes. There's a lot that can be learned from that. If you create an environment where there's like-minded people around you that want to get better and there's a lot of positivity in your life, then you're going to have a lot less negative thoughts inside your head when you go for those big weights. There's nothing more dangerous than self-doubt and there's nothing more powerful than self-respect. The most powerful respect that you can earn is not from other people. I think everybody kind of thinks and feels that way. Like, oh, I'm going to do this and then all these people on Instagram are going to love me. But the greatest respect you can earn is not from other people. It's not from the fucking internet. It's not even from your family. It's from yourself. Everything starts with yourself. It sounds like a selfish message, message in some ways. But everything starts with yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to have respect for yourself. And you have to prove to yourself on a daily basis that you're not a piece of shit. You have to prove to yourself on a daily basis that you're not that kid who had a lot of fear about this or that. We all had our hurdles as kids, right? We are all were picked on a little bit here and there, except for some of you bullies out there. Um, we all have our fears and we all have our, we all have our hangups about, you know, some of the things that happened when we were kids or some of the things that even carried into our adult lives. But the greatest self, the greatest respect you can earn is self-respect. And the way that we build self-respect is through our strength. Everyone kind of talks about working on their weakness all the time. Working on your weakness is, is okay, it's cool. But it's so much better, and it feels so much better to continue to work on the things that you're actually good at. If we really worked on our weaknesses as meatheads, we'd be in the library and not inside the gym. The point is, is every once in a while in life, you gotta throw yourself an underhand pitch and knock that motherfucker out of the park. You gotta sometimes utilize your strengths as your strengths. Think about somebody who's born uh, deaf or somebody who's born blind or somebody who's born with these imperfections, somebody's uh, missing an arm, missing a leg their strengths become so heightened that they're able to achieve all kinds of crazy shit when you, were, when you thought and everybody else thought it wasn't even possible in the first place. By working on your strengths and continuing to work on your strengths, you're gonna continue to build that self-respect that I'm talking about. I got my boy, Silent Mike here. As I always talk about, you wanna be around like-minded people you want to be around people that are hungry to get better. I don't have to worry about whether he's going to show up and actually be intense when he trains. I don't have to worry about if he's going to 
try to hype me up when I work out. These are all things I don't have to worry about with Silent Mike because I already know every time he goes to the gym, he's going to work his ass off. And he never misses workouts. He never misses it ever. If there's some sort of crazy situation where he's got to miss it because he's traveling or something, and he's going to let me know. But you guys have to be around like-minded people in order to get better. If you're doing it by yourself right now, that's cool. That's not a bad route to start because self-motivation is going to be what puts the wheels in motion in the first place. But you're going to have to try to get around some other people because you're not always going to be so fucking excited about lifting day in and day out for days and days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks and years on end. There's going to be a point where you want to bounce ideas off other people. And if you lift by yourself, again, that's going to be kind of all that you know. You're not going to get coached. If I do a rep or do a set that's off, that's out of character, Silent Mike will see it and I'll say, what the hell was that? Or I'll say, that was slow. You know, what happened? Or he'll even see what happened exactly and he'll tell me. Shit, like normally you tighten up better than that or your knee came in or whatever. If you don't have other people watching you, it's gonna be hard to have accelerated learning. You're gonna be learning on the fly by yourself forever. It's gonna take a long time to catch up. And have Silent Mike come up here and chat with you. Come on up here, Silent Mike. What's happening, guys? Uh, just talking a little bit about, Mark was talking about being motivated every day to train. Uh, talking about being inspired every day to train. Uh, something that I find is that motivation and inspiration are something that come and go. They come in waves. They're not really static. Uh, you can be super fired up after you see uh, Mark's Instagram clip of smashing 500 for five. But is that going to last you 10 years of lifting to stay motivated, to stay inspired? Um, I guess I'm lucky. I think Mark would say the same where he's kind of lucky that we found uh, what we consider our passion fairly early in life. Mark probably found it at age three when he was bench pressing, but I found it in my early 20s. And some people it takes longer and longer to find what that passion is. Uh, and then once you find that passion, it's even harder, it's more difficult to follow through with that, to make it not only a hobby, uh, but your lifestyle, and hopefully maybe your work. Um, I look up to Bart Kwan a lot in, in that case where he found his, his, his passions are filmmaking, comedy, and powerlifting and strength training, and he's found a way day in, day out to make that a career. Obviously, my number one mentor in my career is Mark, and he's done the exact same thing, where, you know, when at age 22, he was probably just a meathead. Uh, we were just talking about in the car. He's beating people up at bars, kicking ass, making no money, making enough money to buy food, making enough money to, to maybe pay rent, have a car, and then he found a way to stick with it, to have that drive to actually, uh, it's more of courage to follow that passion. Uh, everyone here obviously has the same passion for, for training. I was lucky enough, you know, some people have shitty high school experiences. I had one of the best basketball coaches ever in high school. Uh, he coached me for four years. Uh, he's taught me multiple things. Two, two things that I'd like to share. Uh, one that Mark preaches to me without me telling him I already knew this, but if you do one thing every single day, uh, towards your goal, you're obviously going to get better. And that could be big goal, small goal. Obviously, Mark benching 500 for five is a pretty big deal on his mission to bench 611 pounds this November 2016. But, but before that, him and I uh, got up early enough that we could eat, made time to get to LA in time before uh, we had to do the seminar so we could get our nutrition in. All those little steps, day after day, hour after hour, are what's going to get him to his goal. Speaking of that goal, oh. Just real quick on that same note, you know, uh, you don't have to be overwhelmed with, uh, oh shit, I gotta find something to do to get better today. Uh, you don't have to feel that way. It's, a, it's much, much easier than that. Uh, working on getting better and working on self-improvement uh, could be getting to bed a little bit earlier. Mike mentioned getting somewhere earlier, preparing a meal, just understanding in your head like, I need three meals to get to the gym. This is very meathead-ish, I, re I recognize that. <laughs> um, but I need three meals in order to train the way that I, uh, I told myself. Keep in mind, you're telling yourself these things all the time, right? You're telling yourself, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. Now, if you wanna do this and you wanna do that, you better fucking back it up. And you're gonna have to back it up by planning. You don't plan ahead, 
you're going to be planning to fail each and every time. So make sure that you're doing that and make sure that you're planning ahead. The other thing is that it can be small tasks. You can go on YouTube and watch a couple different lifters. Maybe you suck in a deadlift. So rather than saying, oh, I suck in deadlift, I think Dave's going to suck. Dave's going to fucking suck my back hurts. Rather than doing that bullshit, go on YouTube, watch as many fucking deadlift videos as you can. It's not that hard. Everyone has YouTube. Everyone's got a motherfucking phone. Get on your phone, get on your YouTube channel, watch people lift until you learn how to do it the right way and make yourself better that way. It doesn't have to be overwhelming to get better. So Mark gets every meal perfect on the way to November to bench 611 pounds. He doesn't miss a workout. He hits all his sets, all his reps, no matter what. He's done everything perfect for these next, whatever, four months leading up. Doesn't mean you're guaranteed to hit that goal. Doesn't mean he's guaranteed to bench 611 pounds. We call that sacrificing for the unknown. You, you don't know what may come of this. You have this goal, which is very important to everything else we've talked about here. Hopefully that's not uh, looked over. You have to know what the hell you're gonna do. I've tried to help coach people and say, hey Mike, what about a six day split with an upper lower uh, daily undulating periodization? Will this work? And I said, well bro, what's your goal? And then they get glossed over in the eyes. You gotta know where you wanna go before you can find the path there, right? Mark does all these things perfect. He's not guaranteed that 611 pound bench. Sacrificing for the unknown means there's a certain amount of work that has to get done. Certain things have to fall into place before you even have a chance to reach this goal. You have to give yourself the best chance to reach this goal, and sometimes it doesn't happen. I was supposed to compete in a powerlifting meet this coming weekend, a week from tomorrow. Um, I tried to never miss a workout. My nutrition was perfect. I hit every set, I hit every, every rep. Halfway through my prep, my back gets a little upset. I'm going to a massage in Cairo, spending half my damn paycheck trying to get fixed every single week, twice a week. I'm masking this pain, deal, deal, deal. Second heaviest squat workout three weeks out from the meet, something gives in my back. Now, I thought I did everything I could take. I did all my nutrition perfect, slept perfect, sets and rep perfect, but sometimes the result's just not there. Now that just means my next goal is to get this back healthy so I can come back and, and do the exact same thing over again and hopefully do it better. If, I've said it many times before, if you want to be good at something, it's going to take a pretty good effort. You probably might, you might need to find a coach, might need to start paying attention a little bit more to what it is you're actually doing. If you have good genetics, maybe you don't need any of that. Maybe you just start lifting and things just start naturally falling into place. But if you want to be great, it's going to take the greatest effort of your life and you're going to have to put a lot of time into it. And in order to put a lot of time into it, you need to realize that you can't just be bold and brave under a fucking barbell. You need to be bold and brave in your life. Your li you have to have a long, awesome fucking life, the best life that you can possibly have in order for the shit to stay intact in here. If stuff's not staying intact in your everyday life, if you're running into drinking problems, you're running into marital problems, you run into problems with other relationships and so on, then this is gonna be the last thing that's on your mind. You're not gonna be able to get this right. <clears throat> My father, who's always been a huge influence on me, you guys seen him in the movie Bigger, Stronger, Faster. He's about five foot two if he's lucky, <laughs> but to me, he's larger than life. You know, and he's always said, you have to love yourself, you have to love other people, and then you can make an impact. And that's what I feel I'm here to do. That's what I feel I'm put, put on this earth to do is to make an impact and make the world a better place to live.